it's not yet come to terms with its fading supremacy. At the end of every empire, under the guise of renewal, tribes, armies and organizations appear and devour the heritage of the former superpower, often from within. In his essay, The Fate of Empires, the soldier, diplomat and traveller Lieutenant General Sir John Glubb analysed the life cycle of empires. He found remarkable similarities between them all. An empire lasts about 250 years or 10 generations, from the early pioneers to the final conspicuous consumers who become a burden on the state. Six ages defined the lifespan of an empire. The age of pioneers, the age of conquests, the age of commerce, the age of affluence, the age of intellect, ending with bread and circuses in the age of decadence. There are common features to every age of decadence. An undisciplined, overextended military. The conspicuous display of wealth. A massive disparity between rich and poor. A desire to live off a bloated state. And an obsession with sex. But perhaps the most notorious trait of all is the debasement of the currency. The United States and Great Britain both began on a gold or silver standard, long since abandoned. Rome was no different. So it started on a principle that was very sound, and it was on a silver standard. But as it corrupted further and further and further, the Roman denarius got to the point where it was basically a copper coin and they learned how to plate and it was washed in silver and in circulation the plating came off. And at the end all the senators that really did at one time represent the people only were interested in representing how much wealth they could steal at the top. Great empire wealth always dazzles, but beneath the surface the unbridled desire for money, power and material possessions means that duty and public service are replaced by leaders and citizens who scramble for the spoils. Historically, all the signs of, of the demise of empire are beginning to develop. Some are more trenchant than others. This current financial and economic crisis, uh, that sort of thing always accompanies the demise of empire. The people of Rome were constantly being distracted by the gladiatorial events and, and, and the, the politicians knew that they did this. Whenever there was unrest among the people, they had a huge event going on. And they, they created a new event with lots and lots of gladiators and every day we're doing that. That is, that is a common trait of declining empires. And so today in the United States, for example, you find a tremendous emphasis on all kinds of television programs that distract people from what's really going on. Sports is a big part of that, as it was in the gladiator times. In essence, we've been lulled into a, uh, a lethargy, and we've accepted it. Just as our sports stars today earn vast sums, so did Roman charioteers. In the second century, one by the name of Gaius Apuleius Diocles amassed a fortune of 35 million sesterces in prize money, equivalent to several billion dollars today. Strangely, perhaps, there's another profession that is disproportionately hallowed as an empire declines. The Romans, the Ottomans and the Spanish all made celebrities of their chefs. And this again is typifying the end of an empire where things were so great, we have this last oomph of momentum that we used to be great, and we felt great, and we don't feel it anymore. So everyone is out searching for it. Well, maybe it's in the best food, or the best clothes, or the best music, or the best movies, or a reality TV show, or another magazine. But you can never get enough of what you don't need. What you need is a strong moral conviction that is pervasive throughout the society and integrity reigns. There's a vast apathy. There's a vast amoralism, even a political nature.